Hello, friends. It is January 20th, 2022, the year of our Lord, and I'm going to review every album by the band, because they're one of my favorite bands. And they're just called The Band. And um, they were going to be called The Honkies or the, the Crackers, but the band seemed to stick, because they were Bob Dylan's backing band for... Uh, that era, Planet Waves, I think was the first record they recorded with him, but Robbie Robertson plays on Blonde on Blonde. There's a lot of Dylan records with band members playing on it, although I prefer Mike Bloomfield as Dylan's guitar player to Robbie. But the band, the band, their first album, I actually believe is The Basement Tapes. It was the first thing that was recorded. There's songs on this that are just written by the members of the band. The band is Richard Manuel, sings and plays piano usually. Uh, Garth Hudson plays the organ stuff. Levon Helm is the drummer, who also sings. Robbie Robertson's the guitar player. Rick Dango is the bass player, who also sings. They all also sing because they do harmonies. So a lot of times they'll do three-part harmonies with Richard, Levon, and Rick, or some combination thereof of the people that are in the band. But their first proper record, I think, is The Basement Tapes, which is a perfect 10. It sounds to me like a just like fun rock out. It's like Dylan getting out of his head and just playing simple, silly kind of blues songs. And then also there are these deep spiritual songs like I Shall Be Released on it. Um, and philosophical songs like Too Much or Nothing. But the whole record, start to finish, is a very fun listen. It just kind of sounds like... A bunch of really talented people rocking out and playing kind of roots music, um, which was kind of punk at the time. If you think about, it, they're doing, they're recording this in like '68, '69. This is the height of like Sgt. Pepper's, like psychedelic rock, prog rock, and they're doing the exact opposite. They're doing like minimalist, emotional, folky. Anyway, so their first record, The Basement Tapes, is a ten. It's a great listen, start to finish. Their second record, which is considered their first record, Music from the Big Pink, is for sure a 10 and is their best record, easily, in my opinion. Um, it starts with Tears of Rage, one of my favorite songs by them. Lyrically, is amazing. Dylan wrote the lyrics to this. Caledonia Mission is another one of my favorite songs. Any song Rick Danko sings, I'm a sucker for. I love their cover of Long Black Veil. I love Garth's organ intro and Chess Fever, although I don't love the song too much. Um... I love the Manuel, the Richard Manuel falsetto song, I Shall Be Released. I like the Long Black Veil. This is a very somber, very sad album. It's very emotionally cathartic. It's very beautiful, very unique. I don't think they ever quite captured that level of authenticity on any of their other records. They just kind of get more complicated and bloated, and, but less interesting to me. Um, to me, they peaked with music from the Big Bang. The band's self-titled album is their most commercially successful record. It's also a 10, and has a lot of great songs on it. Rag Mama Grag, fantastic country song. The Night They Drove Old Dixie Down, an amazing song about just fighting for a lost cause. It's from the perspective of a Confederate soldier, but it metaphorically is just this beautiful elegy for a person who's doomed to sort of fight a losing battle, right? Like, like my father before me, I shall work the land like his father before him. He took a rebel stand. He was just 18, proud and brave when a Yankee laid him in his grave. I swear by the mud below my feet, you can't raise a man back up when he's in defeat. That is good lyric writing. That's not Bob Dylan. That's the band. The songs the band writes are as good as Bob Dylan's songs. They're very good. They're early band songs on the basement tapes. If you get the actual reels, there's Caledonia Mission on it. There's a bunch of songs that are just straight up band songs on the basement tapes that Dylan didn't write. Um, the songs they write are amazing. King Harvest, one of my favorite songs on the record, closes it amazingly. Unfaithful Servant, this song makes me want to weep. The lyrics are so good. Rick Danko's voice emotionally just communicates such a vulnerability and the cadences of all their voices are almost vulnerable and like human and like unpolished 
in a way that it's just like this chorus of plain people. And I mean, Levon's from Arkansas, and they started as the backing band for Ronnie Hawk, the Hawks, and the rest of them are from Canada. But if you think about it, Canada is kind of country if you're out in the hinterlands, right? So, but it's kind of weird because they're kind of like the most American rock band, like literally singing and like about the Union and like Americana more than anybody, but they're not Americans. <laughs> they're Canadians, except for Levon from Arkansas. Anyway, they got too good of a band to just be a backing band for the Hawks. They split off and started doing their own gigs. And that's what the band is. And then Dylan picked them up because Dylan saw them with the Hawks and was like, those guys. And then they did, uh, uh, what was it, Before the Flood? No, that's a Grateful Dead album. Hard Rain, It's Gonna Fall, something like that. There's a band live Dylan album from the era of this period I'm talking about. After the two Clear Tens, the self-titled eponymous record and music from the Big Pink, which I think are their best records, is Stage Fright. Now, I don't know if Stage Fright's a 10. I'm looking at it. Love Shape of Men, Love W.S. Walcott, Medicine Show. Love the song Stage Fright is my favorite song on this record. Again, the melody's amazing. Garth's organ with Richard's piano is fantastic. Rick Danko's vocals. Um, the lyrics to this song are incredible. I could recite them all. They're just, oh, this is one of my all time favorite songs. Is this album a 10? I don't know. Strawberry Wine, Sleeping Time to Kill, Just Another Whistle Stop. This sounds kind of like filler to me. Daniel and the Sacred Harp, Rumor. I don't find, I don't find the start to finish compelling in the way I do the other two records. So I don't believe that that is a 10. Stage Fright has some great songs on it. You should definitely listen to it if you like the band. But I don't believe Stage Fright is a 10. So the band so far have three tens. They have basement tapes, the band, music from the big pick. And I know the band well enough to know that these are their three tens. The only other things I would consider tens are bootlegs of live recordings, which might be in some playlist somewhere. Um, Cahoots is not a ten. Life is a carnival. Their version of When I Paint My Masterpiece is very good, but this record is very inconsistent. And... Um, Definitely not a 10. Uh, Islands, not a 10. I think this is one that's all covers. It's, it's a weird record. Jericho is a much later record. It doesn't even have Robbie Robertson on it. They cover Bruce Springsteen stuff. For sure not a 10. The only one I'm missing is the one that's for some reason not on... Oh, here, Northern Lights, Southern Soul. Yeah, this album has Ophelia. And it makes no difference. So it contains two of their greatest songs, like Stage Fright. Northern Lights, Southern Cross is a good album worth listening to. has some of their best material on it. The version of It Makes No Difference from The Last Waltz is my favorite version of it and my favorite part of The Last Waltz. Although, I guess that's a 10. If you get the soundtrack to The Last Waltz, that's actually a 10. Yeah, so they have four 10s because not only do you get a solid band performance, it's not my favorite live recording of the band. I much prefer ones where they don't have horns and guests and stuff, so you can really hear them like rock out. Um, but the guest performances are great. Joni Mitchell doing coming in during Helpless with Neil Young, uh, doing the Who Do You Love with the Hawks, Van Morrison singing Caravan. A little bit higher. One more time. Oh, that Van performance. The Dr. John, such a night. Yeah, the Last Waltz soundtrack is incredible. And you should get the full Last Waltz because they actually jammed out, like rocked out, and had everybody do these long instrumental jams, but they're not on the soundtrack or the movie. You have to get the complete Last Waltz recordings. You also have to get the complete basement tapes if you want the 10, if you want the thing I'm talking about. So they have four 10s, Last Waltz, basement tapes, music from the Big Pink, and the band. And also, you should listen to Stage Fright, in Northern Lights, Southern whatever, just so you can get those songs that I mentioned. But other than that, they are not on the level of the other records that I told you are 10s. So anyway, those are my band 10s, and we're about to be at 10 minutes. So thank you for watching. I love you. Three.